Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a people revolution. Today we're going to be talking about uh, answering questions from uh, subreddit Ask HR. I'm banned there, so we're going to be talking through things, and I'm going to be answering things that I can't on that subreddit. The first one up is uh, from Texas, and it says, "Do I mention I'm pregnant?" I just found out I'm pregnant, Not, I, no idea how far along yet, but I've been applying to new positions and have an interview with a recruiter next week. Do I tell them I'm pregnant? I don't want to mislead anyone, but I also need out of my current job and would hate to miss out on this particular opportunity. So good question here. But one, you know, I definitely wouldn't tell a, a recruiter you know, initially at all. I mean, if you want to have that discussion with a new employer, which I'm not sure you should, uh, it definitely wouldn't be at this stage. You haven't even, you haven't done anything yet with a new employer. You haven't uh, met with anyone. You haven't met with the hiring manager, as far as I understand. You haven't done anything. So no, do not tell uh, a recruiter who's probably just doing a, a phone screen whether or not you're pregnant. Uh, is it a good idea perhaps later down the road? I, probably not, honestly. Uh, you, you probably just want to, um, you know, apply and interview and, and, and get hired on, but you have no idea what they're going to do anyway at this point. So there's no point in kind of shooting yourself in the foot early. But I will say that one thing that you have to be really cognizant of is the fact of FMLA. If, if you have been there for longer than um, a year, all told, including temp time, you, have, you, you potentially could have FMLA under your uh, current position. And you may not have those same protections uh, in your new position. Now, ADA has some level of protections, and many people should follow it, I think, for pregnant people, but it is somewhat of a gray area. And I, I think that FMLA protections cannot be understated. And for that reason alone, you know, I, I would recommend trying to stay with your current employer until you uh, complete your FMLA and, and be interviewing while you're while you're finishing that up so that you come out of FMLA new uh, with, um, with a different job. That's, that's, that's how I would tackle it. But of course, I'm not a pregnant uh, person. I'm not a person who has to go through that. So take the advice at your own risk. Up is from Georgia. And the question is, why does the HR department not provide feedback to candidates after an interview? And he says, I had an online interview with a company that created a rating system for the interviews. Uh, if the candidate scored six or higher, they would move forward. Uh, and the recruiter read the notes from the interview, giving this person a, a good learning experience and walk away and says they walk away from the interview process with a valuable knowledge instead of being clueless why they didn't get the job. You know, a couple things. I, yes, it would be fantastic. And frankly, this uh, this recruiting department that has this process is a good one, right? It's a company that, you know, that indicates to me that they're willing to go the extra mile and help you out. And probably it's one that you want to work with in the future. So from that perspective, it absolutely could be valuable. On the flip side, you know, for example, on, on a given day, I might interview 20 people and giving them personalized feedback on their specific interview notes isn't really something that I have time for. And, and, and I think that that's really the key. And that's what most people have a problem with here um, in, in HR is just the sheer amount of time that this would take. I, I think that, again, if you find a company that's willing to do something like that, the, the value is, is really there. I would try to stick with them or come back with them, but it's, quite, it's, it's not quite there. 
Uh, I, we don't have the time. The other piece to it is it does present some liability. This company is a bit bold uh, by trying to give feedback to uh, empl or potential employees because there is the liability issue of people actually suing based on what their feedback is. If the recruiter slips up a moment or the raider slips up a moment and says something that's not not quite representative of how they believe, it, it could result in a in in a lawsuit and and for discrimination. And that's really what many of the departments are trying to stay away from. But it's a great question, frankly. The next one up is from Virginia, and it asks, can someone explain salary ranges to me? So the company I work for ha at, ha work at has pay grades that have salary ranges within them and a midpoint. How long does it take to reach the midpoint? And the person goes on to say, my company's pay range is 23 per plus or minus 23% from the midpoint. We get one raise every year, and it's always almost always three percent so if i'm at the bottom of the range trying to climb it to the midpoint how will i ever catch up to the scale if it itself moves up due to cost of living and you know well first off what specifically happens in a specific company you know no hr person can ever answer right that is often you know specific to that company that said this is pretty standard. Companies have pay ranges. Usually it's, I think, 20% from midpoint. You usually have the, the low and the high and the mid. Um, but uh, regardless, it's hard to really think about them in any meaningful way with respect to your pay. It, you know, yes, companies may try to do equity adjustments based on their ranges and based on other employees' salaries. But it's one of those things where you may never quote unquote catch up to the middle uh, the way that you might be able to is a promotion or something of that nature but you're never going to quite catch up to the middle that's the nature of the game um you know it's unfortunate you can attempt to justify salary increases based on the range but ultimately they're going to pay you what they want to pay you and nothing more so the salary ranges are, are really, you know, in many ways meaningless for the everyday employee. I often struggle with this from an HR perspective as to whether or not we should even be disclosing the salary ranges publicly because I feel like it just leads to more misinformation and more frustration on the part of the employee. Uh, but ultimately, to answer the question, yeah, you know, essentially you may uh, get up there in eight to 10 years, but I, I wouldn't even count on that, frankly. I wouldn't count on it. I would sort of ignore the salary ranges and just make sure that you're being paid appropriate to what you do at work. And if you're not, you know, take that into your hands by either asking for a raise or looking elsewhere. Uh, that's it for Human Resources for the People today. Uh, Thank you for your time. If you're interested, if you like the content here, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.